Good morning. Uh, for class today, you need a small ball. And if you don't have a ball, consider grabbing a roll of toilet paper. Uh, that actually works pretty well. Um, and if not, a small like little throw pillow would be great. And we will get started on all fours. You're gonna take the ball to start and just put it in between, or your roll of toilet paper, just in between your thighs, have a little space between your pelvis, but not all the way down at the floor. Um, of course, I'm wearing all black, my mat is black, and so is the ball is dark, but there's like a little bit of space underneath the ball, it's not at the floor. And then you're gonna bring your hands down onto the ground. And then to start, think about just lengthening your head nice and long, not worrying about anything. And then just like wiggle your hips and your shoulders, keep reaching the crown of your head long, although you can look a little from one side to the other if that feels good. Just notice if you have any tightness in your abs or your hips or your shoulders or neck maybe. And then from here, being nice and still, right now you have length in your pelvic floor. You're gonna take a nice big inhale and you're gonna exhale, feel the pelvic floor lift, feel your hip bones draw towards one another, your transverse abdominals, and then your ribs. Maybe you're giving a little more of a hug to that ball. And then on your inhale, release everything back. And then again, take another in, or on your next exhale, you're gonna feel the lift of the pelvic floor, the wrap of the hips, a gentle squeeze on the ball, Again, the roll of toilet paper works nicely because one, it's soft, and two, it's like a similar shape to the ball. And then release on your inhale. One more time like that, inhale. And then exhale, feel the lift of the pelvic floor, wrap of the hips, the transverse abdominals, and your rib cage. Take a nice inhale here, keeping that hold and support through the lower abdominals. So just breathing in towards your chest, the top of your ribs. And then exhale, give that ball a little squeeze and then release and then squeeze. So like tiny little pulses, like you're drawing that pelvic floor a little higher, wrapping those abdominals a little bit more as you pulse for four, three, and last one, and then release. From here on your inhale, Widen your sitting bones. Think about rolling the ball or roll toilet paper or pillow back behind you as you lengthen through the front of your chest. Lift through the torso into a little extension and then tuck the tailbone under as you exhale. Feel the ribs, hips come up towards the ribs, round through your spine and almost think as though you're gonna send the ball forward towards your head. And then as you widen, feel the internal, gentle internal rotation of the femurs the ball goes back slightly, getting that extension, and then press up through the floor as you round forward, round up. Two more, keeping your elbows nice and soft. Last one. And then pause in a nice neutral spine. Let your shoulder blades come in towards your spine, arms stay straight, and then press the floor away. Feel that broadening across your back and then slide down your chest, still stays broad, and press up. And slide the shoulder blades in, press the floor away as they slide out. Four more. Three. Two. And last one. Good, and then from here, just sit back into a child's pose. You can take the ball out and put it underneath your chest if that feels good. Or you can put it all the way back underneath your hips between your feet to give your hips a little bit of support. Whatever feels better for you. And then you are going to send the ball into your, what is this, right hand. And then come up into all fours again, but now your right hand is on the ball. You're going to extend your left leg back behind you, all the way back behind you, and then you're just going to float that leg up and then tap it back down. And then float it up, tap it down. Using this ball to give you a little bit of instability, 
Again, a roll of toilet paper or a pillow, same thing. Lifting from where the glute meets the hip for three. Two, putting weight into that left hand as well. So you're not all the way over to that right side. Last one. Pause with this leg lifted and then bend it in and place it all the way down. With your hand on your ball or roll of toilet paper, you're gonna come to the outside edge, that pinky side edge of your hand, and you're gonna extend it out, press the ball into the floor as you bring this arm back in underneath you. And then roll it out and drag that arm back underneath you. You can do this with a pillow, you put a sock on your hand, any of those things to help give you this little bit of a glide. Feel that elbow reach back towards your hip feeling that engagement through the serratus, all those muscles supporting your shoulder. Last one, leave it extended, float the right or float the left leg off the floor and extend the leg long. Now you're gonna drag this right arm back in as you bring this left knee underneath you and then extend everything long for a little dead bug and extend opposite arm leg, dead bug in the other direction. Good, making sure your hips aren't sinking towards the floor. Two more. Neck is long. Last one. And then bring everything in underneath you and switch the ball to the other hand. So, ball underneath your left hand, float that right leg out and then you're just gonna lift it up and float it back down. And lift and float. And if you wanna come down onto this left forearm to give yourself a little bit more of a base of support if it's too much in your wrist, you can do that. Two more. Last one, bring this right knee back underneath you pinky side of your left hand, hips are still right over those knees, and extend it out, rolling your prop away, and then really resist to drag it back in. And that resistance comes from pressing into the floor. And extend, and back in. Four more. Three. And last one, good, lift this leg off of the floor, extend arm and leg, and resist to bring it back in underneath you. And extend, and bring it back in. And extend, and back in. Four more. Three, check in on your weight shift. That rock through the abdominals, breathing. Two. And last one, bring it all the way in. Bring your hands onto whatever prop you're using and then press it away and bring your knees nice and wide. Let your belly descend towards the floor, release that pelvic floor. And if you want, rest your forehead on the ground, but let your arms be nice and high, pressing down. You're gonna lift up so your ears are in line with your, what is this, biceps? And then you're just gonna lengthen the very top of your spine into a little baby extension, literally only at the sternum, and then press the ball away as you lower all the way down. And then press gently into the ball and just lift up again for that very top of your spine extension, nothing in the lower belly, and then back down. If you want to go into a larger extension for the next two, you can press the ball into your hands as you roll back. But again, keeping this more to that upper spine, doing what feels good and comfortable for you. Last one. And then lower all the way down. Round yourself all the way back up. And then grab your ball. And we're going to come down onto our side. Place the ball in between your knees and your feet are together. And from here, you're just gonna squeeze the ball and feel your abdominals wrap, keeping that uh, 
right side from descending towards the floor. You're going to take an inhale again through that upper chest, keeping that connection through the lower abdominals as you float yourself up into a side plank. Using that gentle pull in and under of this right arm to give you that support like we just had with the ball uh, under our hand and then tap your hips down. And then again, inhale, float up and back down. And if this is too much, you can just think about hovering your hips and not lifting the lower leg, or you're just gonna hold yourself in this nice sideline position, supported on your forearm, taking deep breaths and finding that core activation. We have four more. Again, find that wrap as you lift three, two, last one, pause at the top, squeeze the ball in for 10, eight, six, top leg squeezing down, bottom leg pressing in to keep you lifted for four, three, two, last one, lower all the way down, come all the way onto your right bicep and grab the ball and you can just put it back behind you for a moment. You're gonna extend the legs long to the front diagonal so your feet are slightly in front of you. And from here, you're gonna float this top leg up and then sweep it forward with a flexed foot. And then point and sweep it back. Using your top arm to help stabilize you, sweep it forward, sweep it back. Three more. Last one, leave it back, tap it down and lift for six. Hips are square to the front, four, three, keep using and thinking about this lower abdominals. Also your ribs are not flared because you're not arched. Last one, lift and then bring it forward. You're gonna put it down in front of this bottom leg and lift and lower. And if it's too much, either of these with a straight leg, you're just gonna bend and lift. For four, three, hips are square, two, one, lift it up, sweep it back, tap it down. Lift it up, sweep it forward, tap it down. Combining both of those moves keeping that torso nice and stable. You can add the point and flex here if that feels good, whatever works for you. We have four more, four, three, two, one more. Lift your leg up, keeping it right underneath that hip or an inch or so forward, you're gonna internally rotate and externally rotate. Internally rotate, externally rotate. From the femur, really feel it move. If you were to bring your hand right to your hip, you could feel your leg literally moving in the hip socket for three, two, last one, and then bring that leg down in front of your bottom leg, give your hip a little stretch for a moment. And then from here, just gonna reach your top arm long, and then you can roll forward if that feels good, or you can roll back a little to get like a tiny little twist. And then when you're ready, you're gonna come onto your back with your ball in between your knees. And from here, you're gonna have your hips nice and square on the floor, arms are by your side, but externally rotate from the upper arm. Let your palms face up as you find that external rotation. And then just for a second here, you're gonna think about only rotating through the hand, nothing changes through the shoulder. I'm gonna do one arm at a time because this requires a lot of 
focus and concentration, trying to put your palm on the ground, keeping that opening, and then all the way open it again. And if you're sticking on one arm, we're gonna do two or three on each side where you open your palm towards the ceiling, shoulder is open, externally rotated through the upper arm, and then just trying to flip and internally rotate through that bottom arm without changing the shoulder one more time and then I'm gonna switch hands. Ooh, I haven't done that in a while and uh, well, it got a lot harder. All right, so switching to the other side or just continuing to do this with both hands at the same time. We're gonna do three, rolling nice and slowly, nice and mindfully. Ribs stay connected to the floor in the back, two. Last one. So if you're able to keep that chest open, that external rotation through the upper arm, but palm on the floor, do that. And if you need your palms facing the ceiling, you got that too. All right, from here, take a nice big inhale. Exhale, feel the pelvic floor lift as you give that ball a little squeeze, wrapping across the hips, transverse abdominals, and the ribs, and then float yourself all the way up into a nice bridge here, keeping that opening through the chest. And then you're gonna lower your hips all the way back down, keeping that wrap, and then float them back up. Keep the wrap as you lower, breathing into that upper chest, Support stays through the mid and lower abdominals. Three more like this. Two. And last one. Pause at the top. Take a big inhale. Exhale, feel that rack re-engage all the way from the pelvic floor up through the center abdominals and the ribs, and then give that ball a squeeze and release for 10. Squeeze and release for eight, nine, eight. Continuing to hold that connection, and you can still breathe. And if you poke on your abs, like, wow, they're working hard, but they're not like rock hard, they're not puffed up towards the ceiling. For four, three, two, last one, lower the hips halfway down, lift the right heel, and then lift up, and then lower halfway down, and lift in. Keep feeling both heels dragging back towards your shoulders, engaging through the hamstrings. You can do half or full range of motion here, whatever is more comfortable for three, two, last one, pause at the top. You're going to squeeze that ball and then extend this right leg and then tap the toes back down towards the floor using your arms to help square you, using your abdominals, extend and back in. Keep squeezing the ball. Both inner thighs are holding on to it with the pelvic floor. Two, only one more. Boop. Lower that leg all the way down. Curl your tailbone under and articulate yourself down one vertebrae at a time. Give your hips a little wiggle. And then when you're ready, you're gonna come all the way up. Lift the heel on that left foot. You can bring those toes in a little closer if you need and lower and lift. Again, you can go full range of motion or halfway down, whatever feels better for you today. For six. Five, just hinging at the hip and opening the hip. Three, two, last one. Before you lift that foot, really, really, really refine that engagement of the hamstring on this right leg. The left leg is working. Those inner thighs are squeezing the ball. If you poke on them, they're both working just as hard as each other. Pelvic floor lifted, hips wrap, ribs wrap, extend the leg. Tap it down and extend and extend. Keep reaching the tailbone long. You're not arched in the low back for five, four. Keep breathing. You can always press 
back through those arms. Use your back, use your chest. Last one, lower it all the way down. Curl the tailbone under, lift all the way up. And if it feels good, bring your arms into a goal post position as you roll all the way down one vertebrae at a time. And then give your hips a little shake from one side to the other. And I think about the ball as you can almost think about it rolling across the inner thighs. One more time to each side. Good, and then roll over onto your left side, ball in between your knees. Feet are together on this left forearm, pressing up, finding that draw in, again, getting that underside of your body working, just like with the hamstrings and the other side. Give that ball a little squeeze, find that wrap on your exhale, holding that wrap, Take an inhale through the upper chest, and then on your exhale, lift, and then lower down, and lift. Make sure the ball is not just between your knees. You don't want the pressure of your knees being the thing that does all the squeezing of the ball. You want your pelvic floor to do some work too. Same with inner thighs. For six. Five. If it helps to have a hand on your body, Whatever works for you, you can always bring a hand down. Hips are square to the front. Three. Two. Last one, pause at the top, squeezing that ball for 10. Seven, six. You can almost think little pulses of the pelvic floor. Three, two, last one, and then lower all the way down side. You do not need the ball for this. You're going to lay all the way down onto that left bicep. Your legs are at a 45 degree angle. Again, that front corner. Press that top hand into the mat. You're going to lift the top leg up, sweep it forward, and then point to bring it back. Hips and ribs stay in alignment. You are not arching or flexing your spine. If you need, bend this bottom leg for more support or stability for four, three, hips are square to the front, two, and last one. Leave your leg at that back diagonal and tap it down and lift for eight, seven, six, Leo, come, four, two more, last one. Lift that leg up, sweep it towards the front diagonal, and lift and lower for eight. Six, five, four, two, last one. Sweep it back, tap it down, lift, and tap it forward, and back. Six more, and back, five, Nice and slowly, four, you can add in that point and flex if you want, three, two, and last one, sweep it all the way back, tap it, lift it up, and then internally Put that leg, sorry, right in line with the bottom of your leg as though you were standing on it or slightly in front. And you're gonna internally and externally rotate. Sort of the foot is more or less staying in the same place. And if you bring that hand to your hip again, you can go in and out, and in, and out. For four, three, two, and last one. And then bring that knee forward, lay it down on the floor. That bottom leg is long. And then you can either sort of rotate to the front a little if that feels good, or you can open into like a little baby twist. Whatever feels better for your body, but think about lengthening that hip away from you. Or take your ball, pillow, roll of toilet paper, whatever you've got, and you're gonna let it support you in the low back. 
and you're going to be in a slightly rounded position here through the low back. So the ribs and hips are um, closer together. If this is too much for your abdominals and you want to recline a little bit more uh, and you have something like low to the ground, you can always rest or even the back of your couch, you can always rest with your shoulders against your couch, but just put something underneath your low back to give you a little bit of support and you're gonna bring your hands to your thighs. From here, let your legs be heavy in your thighs. Again, that distance between the ribs and hips is nice and short. Take a big inhale and then exhale, float the right arm all the way up towards the ceiling and exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, lift it up and exhale, bring it down. Even if your whole torso <coughs> is supported, thinking about lifting that arm up while keeping it integrated into your body, using your abdominals to help bring it down. Three more. We'll give you still some nice core work too. Last one, we're gonna trade sides. Give the support to that right leg, float the left arm up. Think about that shoulder sliding down. As you lift, the torso is not changing. You're keeping space between your ear and your shoulder. Three. Two. Last one, lift it up. Lower it down. Bring your right arm to meet it. Rotate your palms towards the floor and then pull your elbows back to the side. You can feel how your abs have to work as your elbows come back and then forward. Again, only go back so far that either your form has been compromised or there's something in your way. For four, three, two, and last one. And then pause here, lift both arms up for four, press down, feel the press down. Three, think about resisting straps from your feet up and then press down. And resist as you lift up, three, this is four, this is the last one, <laughs> last one. And then all the way down, grab on behind the thighs, you can round forward over your legs. Bring your legs nice and wide if that feels good here. And then you're gonna stack your spine back up. And then you have two options. You can either resume the position you were just in or you can come down onto your forearms, your choice. Your forearms will be back behind you. You're gonna extend, actually, this will be easier. So grab your ball or your roll of toilet paper. Everyone is gonna come down onto their forearms or use something to support your shoulders. Maybe it's yoga blocks, the side of your couch, your choice. And we'll start with our left foot. Ah. Grab whatever you're using to roll or slide you away. Again, you can use socks here. Let yourself sink down towards the floor and then press down into the floor. Feel your tailbone lengthen and your spine lengthen. Your neck is nice and long. You're pressing the floor away. You're lifted here. Your heel is on that ball. It is right in line with your sitting bone and you're gonna extend this left leg long and then resist to bring it back in. Pressing it into the ball, feeling that engagement through the hamstring as you bring it in and then extend and press it in and extend and press it. Two more. Creating some resistance for yourself, last one. Leave that leg long and then float this right leg up to tabletop. And then from here, send the left leg in as you extend the right leg and then bend it back in. And extend the left leg as you extend the right. You can always do this on your back if this isn't comfortable, like laying all the way down. Feel that lift and wrap through the torso for three, two, last one. And then lower the right leg all the way down, extend the left leg, and then roll the ball over to the other leg, drag that left leg in, plant it on the floor, and then bring this right leg in, readjust as you need, and then extend it long, and resist to bring it back in. And extend it long, and resist. 
kind of is. That knee is pointing up to the ceiling, so are your toes. Creating that resistance. For four. Three. Two. And last one. Extend that leg long, float the left leg into tabletop, and then extend it long as you bring the right leg in. And out. And in. And out. Hips are square for four. Three. Two. And last one. And then bring this left leg in, grab onto the ball in between your ankles. And you're gonna bring both legs up to tabletop. You can bring the leg in, or the ball in between your knees if you prefer. That will be a little bit easier than your feet, just weight wise. And then you're going to externally rotate from the top of the leg so the heels are towards the ball. Again, you can lay down all the way if you prefer. And then you're gonna extend, feel that lift of the pelvic floor, that wrap through the hips and the abdominals, and then bring it back in. And then squeeze the heels as you exhale and extend, and then inhale as you come back in, and then exhale, extend. Inhale, bend. And in. Three more. Two. Last one. You can obviously always ditch the ball. And then bend it all the way in. Bring your knees all the way together as you bring your feet to the floor. And then bring your knees together and come to lay all the way down on the floor with your knees just touching. Your feet are wider than your hips and just let your low back sort of release and sacrum release and open here. And then when you're ready, you're gonna roll onto your left side and then come all the way back up and grab your ball. You're gonna bring that ball back to where we had it when we started class, sort of halfway in between the pelvis and the floor. And you're gonna have your toes pressing into the floor here. Tuck the tailbone under, find that length and opening through the front of the hips as best you can. Feel the wrap of your abdominals as you inhale and then you're gonna exhale, extend your arms in front of you as you hinge back and then press your arms back as you come forward. If this is too much and you are not in a position to do this today, you're just gonna let your arms come up as you maybe come back a quarter inch and then press as you grow tall. And then inhale, come forward, or hands come forward, exhale, press them back, get a little squeeze through the triceps. Inhale, hinge, your hips, head, and shoulders all move at one rate. And back. Three more. It's called thigh stretch for a very good reason, too. And last one, give that ball a little squeeze and then come all the way down onto all fours again. This time, you are gonna tuck your toes under, take a nice big inhale, and then exhale, squeeze the ball and float your knees up off of the floor. On your inhale, lower them down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Three more. Going at your own pace. Fully releasing. The engagement, the ball. As you lower down, last one. Lower all the way down. Sit back, give yourself a little stretch for a second if you need here, a little wiggle. And then you're gonna come back, find your all fours one more time in this little bear plank. Take a big inhale, exhale, lift up to all fours. Holding here for three. Two, heels of the hands are pulling back. 
neck or crown of the head is racing forward. Last one, lower all the way down. We're gonna do one more hold like that and then take the ball out from between our knees. Inhale when you're ready. And exhale, lift. We're gonna stay for another three breaths. One more breath, inhale, exhale. Lower all the way down and then pop that ball out. From here, you have two choices. Actually, we'll do one on each side of the first option before we build on. So you are going to untuck your right toes, left toes stay curled under. You're gonna lift up into a bear plank with this, just the left leg is lifted off the floor and you're gonna lift your right leg up to meet it but not tuck those toes under and then place it back down on the ground. Left leg is staying in the air and then you're gonna exhale Bring this right leg to float up off the ground. Lower it all the way down. Lower your left leg. So you're sort of going into if you were in like a kneeling position with one leg extended, which is where we're going to go. So you can either stay lifting the right leg while in a bear plank, or you're going to extend the left leg. So take a big inhale here. Exhale. Lift that knee up off the floor. And then lower the knee down. And then lift the knee up off the floor. Lower down, three more. And lower, two. And down, last one, lift. And then lower it all the way down. Bring that left leg in, tuck the toes of the right foot this time. Left toes are untucked. Make sure your bracelet isn't under your palm. Take a nice big inhale, or first, just float this right leg up off the floor. Inhale here, exhale, float that left leg off, and then lower down, and then float that left leg off, and lower down. Either stay here, or if you're choosing to build on, extend that right leg, and on your exhale, you're tucking your tailbone under, and you're bringing your knee into your chest, and lowering down, and then lift, and lower, four more. Holding for a full breath or as long as feels good. Two. And last one. And then lower all the way down. Come onto your forearms and lower your head towards the floor. Walk your knees back so that they stay right underneath your hips. Let your back arch, your belly drop, your sit bones widen. And then press through the arms. Widen your hands. Oops. Make sure your ball's out of your way. Widen your hands about as wide as the mat. Definitely wider than your shoulders. And then you're in this little like dolphin position here. And then you're going to slide yourself forward into a nice supported little, what is this? A little kneeling plank. And then widen through the sitting bones to take you back into this little rest position here. And then come back to that kneeling plank. Really feel from the pelvic floor all the way up through those ribs. A little zip and wrap. Not a suck in, an engagement. And then pause in this little rest and then come forward. And back one more time. And then coming all the way forward into this kneeling plank here. And if kneeling is too much, you're going to bring your knees right underneath you into your regular all fours. You're going to take your right hand and tap your left shoulder and then left hand, right shoulder. I need to bring my knees in today. I don't have the strength to do this at the moment. Alternating from one side to the other, reducing the wiggle in your hips, in your torso, so no one would be able to tell if they like blurred out where your arms were. No one would be able to tell that you were switching from one side to the other. Three more to each side. Two. 
Last one. Good, and then staying here, coming down onto your forearms, and then pressing yourself back up. And again, if you're completely in all fours, you're doing the same thing. You're gonna lead with your right hand for three. We'll do five on each side. Two. And again, find whatever version or variation or amount of plank works for you today. And then switch sides, so left hand leads for five. And if you want to do this in a full plank, by all means, go for it. I don't. For two more. Last one. And then sit all the way back. Bring your knees nice and wide. And then come to kneel once more. Bring your arms out to the side and then let your left leg come long. Right hand is gonna come to the floor. You're in this nice supported side plank here and you're gonna float that left leg up and up for five. Three, two, pressing the floor away, last one. Extend your arm overhead and then pull your knee to your elbow and extend for eight. Six. Five. Four. You can always just do that leg lift if the arm is too much. Two. Last one. And then plant that foot down. Press the floor away as you side bend up and over to the left. And then coming all the way up, externally rotate this left leg, then reach down your leg. Just don't press directly on your knee and twist or rotate your body rather toward your leg as you side bend up and over to the left. And then coming all the way up, bring this left leg back underneath you, right leg out to the side, arms long as you Fall with control over to the left and then lift that leg and lower down for five, four, three, two, feel that wrap. Last one, reach it overhead and then extend, or not extend, bring it in and extend. You can always just lift as you bend that leg in and not include the arm. You've got options for four. Two more. And last one. Extend the arm, extend the leg, press the floor away as you side bend. Reach those hips up towards the ceiling. Open them so you're nice and square still through the hips. Pressing that left femur forward. Ooh. And then come all the way up. Externally rotate. Bring this right knee and toes to the ceiling and then reach down just don't press directly on your knee and side bend up and over towards the right keep pressing both hips forward good and then come on to your hands and knees curl the toes under and then lift the hips up Bring your feet as wide as your mat and bend your knees. Again, sending those hips up towards the ceiling. And then you're gonna extend your right leg and then your left leg and then your right leg and then your left. Two more. Left. And then walk yourself all the way back. Let yourself hang in a ragdoll position here. Again, with the feet nice and wide, shift your weight from one side to the other. You got a little sway of the upper body if you don't wanna just shift your hips, or you can do both. 
and then soften your knees a whole bunch. Start to roll yourself up. Feel the opening of the sacrum. As the sitting bones reach down your legs, the opening of the hip flexors. Stacking your spine up one vertebra at a time. And then grab onto a wall if you need. And you're going to cross your right ankle on top of your left leg. And you're just going to sit down and take a little figure four stretch with some balance. You can hold on to nothing. You can hold on to the wall, <coughs> your couch. Or if you're like, I'm not doing this, sit down or lay down. You got options. Think about reaching the tailbone long. And all those little micro adjustments happening in your feet. Making them nice and strong. And then sit all the way up. Shake that leg out. And then cross left ankle over right thigh. And then sitting back. Same thing. Spread those toes wide on that right foot. Think about lengthening through the hips towards the floor. Torso's lifted. A few more breaths. And stand all the way up. And then you're just going to stand with both feet even. Send your right heel to the floor. Bend your left leg as you send your hands towards the floor and sweep up. And you're just going to sweep up three more times. Reaching nice and tall. Two. And last one. And then switch sides. So left heel comes forward. Right knee is going to bend as you send your hips back. Sweep for four. Three. Two. Last one. And then from here, stand with both feet even. Sweep down and then find yourself standing all the way up. Externally rotate your arms, press down, grow nice and tall. Make sure your ribs are stacked over your hips. Give yourself a little wiggle and you are all finished. Thanks. See you next week. Bye.